tämän päivän ensimmäinen keynotein teema on Digital Die. Ja meillä on puhjana Peter Sondergaard, founder and executive advisor the Sondergaard Group. Ja, ja Peter on tällä hetkellä meillä etäyhteyksien päässä. Good morning, Peter. Good morning. Good morning and thank you. How, how are you? Uh, I am very well. I am very well. I am uh, broadcasting here from a COVID secure secret bunker uh, somewhere in Helsinki. Yes, I, I happen to know where the bunker is, uh, and, and it's in the future center of Helsinki, as they say, uh, Pasila. <laughs> But what, what, what can you see <laughs> from the window? That's all <laughs> Okay. But the stage is yours, Peter. Uh, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. There are only three things that personally changes our behavior fundamentally. It is when we get married, when we move, and when we have children. In society, there's also three things that change our behaviors permanently. It's war, it's economic crisis, and it is pandemics. I believe it is clear to everybody that whatever we had as a strategy for digital in the beginning of this year must now be torn up and we must start anew. And therefore, this presentation is going to focus on really two aspects. One is, what are the four phases that we are going to go through? And then, what are at least two major things that we need to focus on in terms of making sure that digital does not die? As we go into this, I want to hold a certain number of things shall we almost say axiomatic in what uh, will define the future for us. One is it has been very clear that software is really eating the world, to take a very popular quote from Mark Andreessen way back in the beginning of 2010s. We also know that every company is really based on software And it has to behave like a software company in everything it does. And then last but not least, we know that data is the foundation of what it is we do. Digital is data, and it is specifically now about analytics and artificial intelligence. As we go through this, keep all of this in mind, because it is important in terms of the shifts that are happening. But let's first dive into the main question and answer that question. Did digital die? The answer is really no, it did not. However, it stalled. And we have what I would say digital fatigue, not necessarily in the IT organizations around the world and here in Finland, but we do have business level fatigue around digital. And let me show you exactly what it means when I say digital stalled. First, we can actually conclude that we didn't really get that far in the 15 years that we have focused on digital transformation. Only 6% of companies are really fully transformed. And so we can rest back on this observation that has been a truism for a very, very long time, which is two out of three strategies, perhaps even three out of four strategies fail in its execution. Every hour, three million euros are lost on failed strategies. And so we have a lot of work to do, despite the fact that we may have said, well, digital is in fact accelerating as a result of COVID. The answer to that is, the transformation really is in a middle stage in which we are trying to figure out how to get on the next wave of transformation. Now, why has it stalled? There are many excuses that we can give, but the main thing is this aspect of thinking about digital as a project and not thinking about it as being in the core behaviors of employees and most specifically all managers, not just the IT managers, but all managers across the organization. Now, I said 
strategies fail in their implementation. And this data shows that in fact, many companies have not been able to reach the objectives that they have set in the strategy. So the first learning coming out of this first phase is we need to understand how to execute strategy and that executing strategy in an agile manner is not about executing great projects. It's about continuous change, continuous transformation in the organization. And that rests on the leaders of the company and the organization. So did digital die? No, but the transformation slowed and we have digital fatigue in the business portion of the organization and we need to restart that. Now, the next phase we are all perfectly well aware of, which was the transformation that happens as a result of COVID. And many people have speculated that this, in fact, was the acceleration. I will differ on this point. Yes, we were excellent at implementing digital workplace initiatives. We were starting now to see the scalability of robotic process automation across the organization within processes. And yes, we learned how to actually sell and execute and service from a digital commerce and service perspective. But that really skewed the transformation. And we know this was not strategy, this was reaction. It may have been strategy in real time, but do we really understand where this is taking us and what happens with everything else? Because things were left behind because we needed to focus on a pandemic response. That phase is now getting well established. We can say unfortunately because it has been a terrible issue for many people across the globe. And we're now entering into the next stage, which is not necessarily better. It is about recession. And as I said in the beginning, there are a few things that fundamentally change behaviors in society. It's pandemics and it is deep economic recessions. And so your job going forward is try to extrapolate what happens while you execute this next phase of digitalization, which is about digital optimization. Yes, you responded. You perhaps even had extra budget to respond, but now reality hits many organizations as we go into the 2021 budget session. And for that, we need to start to think differently about our digital implementation, about how we optimize. I'd recommend you take your digital projects and plot them in this three by three matrix in order to understand exactly how are you executing this transformation with the background being your 2021 budget. Yes, some of these things can truly create value. And yes, through crisis, many leaders do emerge. But for the totality of businesses in this audience, we have to think about what does this do to our digital transformation process? Once we're into that, we can then go into the next stage of this transformation. This stage is where we have to change the starting point. The starting point of digital transformation, whether we want to admit it or not, has been the technology driven by a very capable IT organization with important roles such as the CIO, the chief digital officer, the chief data officer, the chief technology officer, all critical in the transformation. But we need to start at a different place now, and we have the opportunity to do so. We need to start with the senior leadership team and have them formulate what the transformation is about, and how digital fits into that transformation in a world where behaviors have changed. Because admit it, they have, they will, they will permanently change, and therefore understanding first, what were your behaviors before the crisis? What were the behaviors during the crisis? But then more importantly, 
what is the stable new normal of behaviors among customers, suppliers, employees, and of course, your investors or economic community, or if you're in the government area, the political environment. It is a business-led transformation now. It cannot be a technology-led transformation where you may add a sprinkle of business magic dust to that transformation. So let's start with a thought experiment, or more specifically, maybe let's go out into the future and really start to imagine what things could be like. The end state, if we want to say it that way, recognizing, of course, that there is really no end state, that we are asymptotically moving towards a transformation of society and of the organization that you work for. There are three, perhaps even four, major knowns in this that, if we really extrapolate them, creates a completely different structure. Yes, you're doing cloud today. I know that. But what happens if cloud is actually all you do and it runs all the way to the edge of your architecture, to the physical assets that you have now connected to your ecosystem? What is cloud to the edge really like? Data and artificial intelligence. Yes, you are now in the midst of the implementation of artificial intelligence through centralized projects applicable in areas where you can see real transformation with artificial intelligence and machine learning. But what happens when we take it to the edge of our architectures, to the end users, to the devices, the things that we connect? And then, and this has been an area in which Alyssa has excelled, we have seen the pervasiveness or could see the pervasiveness of communication architectures that allow for tremendously different bandwidths to be implemented over the course of the next 15 years. What does the world look like when we are at the end of that transformation? And then we do need to think about other things, such as, for example, what happens when our compute architectures change, whether it is quantum or whether or not we are looking at far more efficient architectures that we implement, such as, for example, what is being discussed today in terms of implementation of data centers in the sea, or, and this happened to me over the course of the last 24 hours, somebody that I talked to talked about putting data centers on the moon for energy efficiencies and then be able to broadcast back to Earth. What happens? Three things happen. First, we end up with a series of autonomous products. The world becomes defined by a world in which we have a complete replica of the physical in a digital instance, all the way to what you're seeing some of the major corporations in Finland across the Nordics doing in terms of, uh, for example, in Norway, complete digital replicas of drilling platforms in the North Sea. The second thing we see is complete automated processes. So the organization will have a digital twin in which, of course, we need to then contemplate how do human beings fit into a world in which all of the processes that have been disconnected, whether it's your SAP systems or Oracle systems or Salesforce environments, for which human beings always were trusted with the decision part of those systems, what happens if they are complete end to end? And then last but not least, what happens in the transformation about humans? How we as humans operate in this world? I pose you the major question, an average manager in your organization, they will have a series of employees, and a series of artificial machine learning based environments that define the scope of their responsibility. How do you do a performance review of those people? Do those people do performance reviews of bots as well as of human beings? There are many questions that in your thinking strategically, you now need to start to answer 
And what better than to do a thought experiment? What better than to think out into the future in terms of what you should do? This becomes a completely different world of processes and products and citizens. And that is the foundation for you articulating what your strategy is as you move through 2021. The main thing is that we will have a world in which we need to think completely differently about managing. It is about a world where we manage people and robots, whether it is physical robots or software-defined robots that execute the business objectives that each manager across the organization has. And that therefore leads us to the next and second part of this presentation, because we're not ready for this. We have not been trained at university, at business school, or even training through life how to deal with this environment. It is not an inbuilt leadership capability of how to operate in this area. And the reason why digital stalled, the reason for digital fatigue is our leaders are not ready. And it doesn't really help just giving them, say, a crash course in uh, Python programming or a crash course in how to connect Lego-based IoT devices to an environment. This is about a skill set that we need to deploy. And so I would strongly encourage you in collaboration with the HR organization to think about how do we move our leadership skills. And when I say leadership skills, I mean all managers in the organization. I understand that for those of you from the IT side, you have very capable individuals that understand this. But we need to bring those capabilities to the rest of the leadership team. And if you are a business leader sitting there saying, I'm good, I know, because I have worked with this for some time, that's fantastic. You now have one key responsibility. The 99% of other people in your organization that are managers need to be coached by you. So your job becomes a coaching job. Let's look at the skills. First, we have a set of classical leadership skills that any manager does. Everybody does budgeting or people management. They do strategy. They do change management, project management. And then they have a series of what I call functional skills. A functional skill is if you work in a marketing organization, you have marketing functional skills. If you work in finance, you have finance skills. If you work in production, you may have a set of manufacturing or supply chain oriented skills. All of these classical leadership skills change. And artificial intelligence, that heart of the change of digital transformation, over the course of the next 15 years is what requires us to start a process of changing this. Budgeting changes. We don't have to only budget once a year. We've learned that this year. The budget may be fixed, but we have to vary it. Artificial intelligence will actually help us do that. We have the data that allows the organization now to use that in a constructive manner. And you can see this all through these leadership skills. And I ask you, therefore, the question, if you look at the training that you give internally in your organization, how much do you focus on this? And I tell you this because this transformation in a single manager is at least a four-year transformation. It's not something that we can send somebody on a course to learn, and then they go, got it, I'm now ready. This is trial and error, and this is how we need to think about things differently. I would propose also that we now add a new set of leadership capabilities. In the middle, you see what I call the softer skills. Things like storytelling, ideation, and innovation, those have been on the cusp of uh, many organizations over the course of the last four or five years. But we need to transfer that into every manager. Because remember, 
what we're dealing with is a future that can't be described because technology has an infinite number of different opportunities. So therefore, we need to make sure that those opportunities are in fact reflected in people's leadership capabilities or traits or competencies. And then we have the hard ones, the ones that really require substantial training, understanding of technology, how to be agile as a business leader. Again, many of these have been a focus, but maybe not all of them. You should choose two that will really transform your business and then make that pervasive over the next couple of years in terms of how you do this. Now, this is how I would describe it in greater detail. You can get this later because I do want to get to the second thing that becomes critical in this transformation, and that is the change that happens around artificial intelligence. Uh, now, artificial intelligence, such a broad word. Let's not spend time on that. But governance is an important aspect of everything pertaining to data and the algorithms that we use. And we need to think differently about this. This is about making everything explainable, transparent, accountable, and ethical. And let me briefly propose what I think you should do as part of this. You have to implement an artificial intelligence governance charter. This is, in fact, going through EU legislation and uh, national legislation at this stage. Think about, does your customers have a right to know when they encounter artificial intelligence? Should you notify your employees when they have uh, AI decisions that are being taken on their behalf? Should you be notified about, about bias? My recommendation, start through the CEO or the chief leader of your organization to develop a, an AI governance charter that has at least three components, how you act towards the customer, how you act towards the employees, and how you act towards your suppliers. Successful implementation of a digital transformation requires this. So I leave you with three things. We have four different phases that we are going through. Digital did not die, but we have to resurrect what we have done, and the starting point is different. Doing so requires focus on leadership, and it requires a focus on what happens with the massive explosion of data and algorithms that interpret that data so that the leader can become a competent leader in an AI technology-led transformation of digital over the next five to 10 years. May the digital be for, force be with you in whatever you do. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. Uh, a couple of questions. Let's let's begin first uh, from that perspective that you took on AI. And as someone who has been working and developing AI algorithms for five years in my own company, the ethical part has stood out. I mean, what's the minimum that every company should do before they start even producing or designing AI algorithms on the ethical part? Uh, I think... I think uh, truisms are important. One, understand that your data is biased. Um, I inevitably, it is not going to reflect uh, your future employees, your future customers. The second thing is uh, make sure that this is an, a CEO and a board-related issue uh, and that you follow closely legislation that is going through uh, in Europe at this stage, because when it comes to ethical um, uh, AI, uh, Europe is really the leader, um, and it's important that you therefore consider doing that. I would then also recommend that you start to look at actually how are you managing your algorithms. Right now, they're spread out everywhere. I think you need some level of platform that allows you to understand and manage them, because remember, these are almost living things and so they need to be monitored and managed yeah and 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 also in the ethical uh, consideration i i think people should think about the consequences uh tended and un, un, unintended uh, absolutely correct yes uh and and i think that's why uh you then go to 
what needs to happen in the organization. I, th I think we need to be transparent about what we are doing. This, is n this should not be a secret. Uh, the, there needs to be a communication campaign around this. And then, as I said, I think artificial intelligence from a business perspective is a leadership capability. And so we need to bring this to all leaders in the organization. They are going to encounter it. And the best way is to be transparent and allow them to articulate to all employees what your organization stands for when it comes to ethical AI. Peter, I, I know I'm putting you on a spot here, but I have to ask this, that, that I sometimes feel that the top-down change is too slow for the speed of current change. Should we just change all the people on the board and, and all the C-level people to make this change happen? Um, no. <laughs> uh, one that would be, I think, a little unfair on them because they are doing actually, um, on average, a fantastic job. Uh, furthermore, what I've talked about in terms of leadership capabilities is not something that could be expected of people that they know, but they're just not executing. Uh, this is all new, so so I think I think we 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 can't uh, ignore the fact that we need transformation in leadership capabilities, both at the executive level and at the board level. Uh, but replacing is is not a solution. Um, I do believe that we need to recognize that in employees there is a vibrant culture of digital uh, native thinking. And that if we train the leadership team, we can start to address that. But the main thing, I think, is to then address what I perhaps unfairly to them have called the frozen middle management when it comes to digital transformation. And that is all about uh, education, transformation of objectives, different levels of training as we go forward the next couple of years. And I think that will unfreeze our digital transformation and move digital to be something that is pervasive through the strategy of the company. Thank you very much, Peter. This was great. Thank you. Thank you.